Hey, what's up everyone? This is Largo Vlogs here and welcome to part 12a of the Super Marcus Galaxy audiobook. That all said and done, let's get started. Super Marcus Galaxy part 12. I am pretty nervous to find out what Anna Amusement Park Galaxy is like. I heard it is a very different galaxy indeed. I have also heard it is an amusement park that does not have any roller coasters. I head up to the garden to get to that galaxy, and I took the launch star to make my way into the galaxy. In this galaxy, it is not a Six Flags or World of Fun. In this galaxy, it looks like I'm in a child's bedroom where there is no bottom, and the kid's bedroom is bigger than Stephanie's castle. After taking the launch star, I walk around and see there are some toy turtles around. These guys breathe fire, and they breathe a lot of it. I could literally smell the galaxy melting. Now, here's where things get complicated. There was a little fork in the road. There were two paths. The first path was called the Erica Path. The second one was called the Erica Path. The Erica Path. Difference in the two paths is the first Erica, or the, the second one has a K between the C and the A. Two very similar paths. I decided I would go on the Erica Path first, the one that does not have a K in it. On the Erica path, I found a silver mushroom that looked like a spring. I ate this mushroom and I became Spring Marcus. As Spring Marcus, I was jumping super high and I could barely control myself. I almost fell off the planet. After that, I went into this green pipe and inside this room were pictures of Reese. These were, these were posters saying Super Reese Galaxy coming soon. It does make me wonder what Super Reese Galaxy is. The Reese I saw is the same Reese I know. And I wonder if he will go to all the same places I have been to. Or will he experience different galaxies? It might be a different concept altogether. However, it is strange how someone knows that Reese will have a galaxy adventure just like me. I wonder if Caesar is, going, is trying to make me think of other things to distract me, but I'm not 100% sure. I go to some mini planets with nothing really that interesting, and then I meet this giant robot. The giant robot tells me this, Ha ha ha, if you want the star, you'll have to stop me, bro. This robot seemed to move very slowly, and I had no problem climbing on the robot. I make it to the top, and when the robot was shooting fire, I grab a spring mushroom, and I climb to the top of him. I did a ground pound through some platforms, thinking I would defeat him when inside the midpoint. But I ground pounded right through the robot and fell under the platform. I fell a long way down, and I started bouncing on lava. The next thing I know, the robot landed on me, and totally squashed me. But as it squa but as it squashed me, it exploded. And I was still okay enough to grab a power star. I took a launch star over to another planet, and there was a lava figure of me. I didn't even know that people in outer space even knew I existed, but I must be famous though. I collected some power star or some silver stars, and I easily formed a second star. I knew I had one more star to find, and it was in the Erica path with a K. Which is way back up. I found a spring mushroom and launched at just the right angle to barely nab into a launch star and to get all the way back to where I was in the beginning. I found my path to the Erica path, the one that has a K in it, and I started going that way. On this new Erica path, I found a golden spring mushroom. This mushroom was about 10 times higher than the silver one. The bouncing was really out of control. I bounced on some dessert walls and over some candy bar walls. Before I knew it, I breezed through an ice section. The ice section had 100 ice platforms all spaced out slightly. Some ice platforms were slippery and others weren't. One trick I had to learn was Spencer's Ice Theorem. Spencer's Ice Theorem is saying for every 10 ice platforms, I have to spin jump at least once to avoid the ice making me slip. The more you spin jump, the less slippery the ice is. After getting past about 70 platforms, I almost fell. I used the ice as monkey bars, but at platform 91, the ice melted and I fell. I fell for a really long time. I even fell out of the amusement park and just as I was about to land in a black hole, a moving cannon caught me. The cannon launched me so hard that I flew back into the amusement park, broke through glass, and I got a star. I did not know how to feel. I thought for sure I was not going to get out of that galaxy without having to fight one of Caesar's minions. Meanwhile, at Caesar's castle, Caesar, lettuce, what happened? 
Lettuce, what do you mean? Caesar, Marcus just not Marcus just snatched the last star, and you didn't even try to stop him. Lettuce, well, Marcus flew out a cannon and broke the glass containing the star, and I couldn't stop him. Caesar, lettuce, you need to be more aware of your surroundings. First, you hide in a refrigerator without even watching out for Marcus, and now you don't even attempt to fight Marcus? Boy, you have some issues. Lettuce, I don't know why you're accusing me of having issues. I mean, come on, Dad. You kidnap some lady named Stephanie because of some little girl who hurt you in high school. I think you have issues, bro. Caesar, Lettuce, I don't want to hear it. I am not happy right now. Go to your room. Lettuce, Dad is really getting on my nerves. Ranch, yeah, bro, tell me about it. Lettuce, he can't have a random girl because he is upset about the fact he cheated on another girl he loved. This was years ago, and he is still not over it. Ranch, Lettuce, you do know that Dad isn't being completely honest, right? Lettuce, what are you talking about? Ranch, well, late at night, Dad is always talking on the phone, and he refuses to tell me who it is. If anyone gets close to him, he hides the phone. Also, every time we have a family meeting, we are right above where Stephanie is. That means that Stephanie can hear everything that is being said. Dad is only telling us what is safe for Stephanie to hear. If Stephanie hears Dad's true motives, she will obviously tell Marcus. Lettuce, do we want Stephanie and Marcus to know Dad's motives? Ranch, bro, we don't even know Dad's motives, but I think they should. It's just that I don't want any of us to be associated with any of his motives. To be honest, I wanted to be like Dad and have money, but he does so in such a dishonest way. The fact he kidnapped a girl because he is in love with another girl is really why I don't want to fight Marcus no more. I mean, he did nothing wrong. Lettuce. I didn't even fight Marcus this time, and Dad was pretty upset with me. Ranch, okay, I have an idea. What we should do is unlock Stephanie's door, and she'll be able to escape or even find out what Dad is really hiding. And then we can find out what he's really up to. Lettuce, Ranch, do you feel bad that Dad is heartbroken? Ranch, here's the thing. Dad is teaching us not to call girls hoes and stuff like that. That's respectable. That really is. But on a phone... When I caught a little of his conversation, he is flirting on a phone saying babe and baby. On five different nights, I heard like six different voices. Lettuce, for a hurt man, he sure sounds like a player. But he says he's not a player because to him, players don't let girls get to him. He says that to tell himself he's not a player. Ranch, no, Kizzy! I'm going to unlock Stephanie's door and we will see what happens. This next family meeting should be good. Listen, bro, dad is going to be so mad. But this will teach him not to be flawed and he'll stop trying to ruin people's lives. Back to Marcus's adventure. Angelina hasn't really said anything to me in a while. I'm worried about two major things. My adventure is three quarters over and I have no idea where the last two green stars are. Also, I haven't found the 30 missing stars from prankster comments. I'm a little paranoid about that, but I'm hoping to find those stars soon. I went to my next galaxy, which is known as Jason's Jumping Clock Galaxy. In this galaxy, I was inside of what is known as a Jason Clock. A Jason Clock is a clock that has five hands. The first three are the hour, minute, and second hands. The fourth hand is a Bitcoin calculator. This hand stays between nine and three at all times. If this hand is on the 12 or three side, that means that Bitcoin has gone up in the last 24 hours. And between nine and 12, means Bitcoin has gone down in the last 24 hours. The fifth hand is a lava meter. As time goes by, a Jason clock is supposed to fill with lava to keep the inside clean. At first, when I was inside, I didn't think a clock could have lava, but I saw lava and I climbed with the gears and platforms on the clock. Climbing a giant clock is pretty stressful. There are giant cubes you have to climb, rising platforms, and falling off can cost you big time. As I got to the top, I saw a blue smasher thing that looked like a thwomp, and I climbed up on it, and I reached for the star. This was known as Stomp on the Thwomp. I got worried because the star didn't take me back to the observatory. Also, the lava had filled up most of the clock. The fifth hand was on 11, so 11 twelfths of the clock was already stuffed up with lava. I do a crazy ground pound, and the lava started draining really fast. I find these fast-moving clock hands, and this was known as getting a hand. 
After staying on these hands for a bit, the lava started rising up again much faster. But just as the lava was seven feet away from me, I located a green star in a box room. And I grabbed it and headed back to the observatory. As I got back to the observatory, Angelina told me that she had some important things to tell me. This is what she told me. Marcus, I see that you have found the second green star. You only have one more green star to find. Also, you have one more galaxy to go through before you fight Caesar Jr. again. This galaxy takes place in a hotel inside of a hotel. However, instead of getting a power star, you need to find an orange key. I'm going to give you a phone and you need to call me when you have the key. You will need this key for the grand star that Caesar Jr. has. Also, if you manage to beat Caesar Jr., there is a prankster test that you will have to take before going to the sixth dome. You do not want a Christmas tree as Caesar has left 30 possible stars for it. This test is different from others because getting questions wrong will penalize you more. Marcus, you must make sure you have 180 stars minimum before the Santa star makes its final decision. Remember, you will need to call me to get out of that galaxy. I find it a little weird that I have to call Angelina to get out of a particular galaxy. I don't know how that will work, but I'll know soon enough. Angelina had just finished telling me about this galaxy where I have to find an orange key and call her. I figured there were no stars there because of the green star I just found, so it made sense. I think she's going to show me how to get out of the galaxy without the grabbing of a power star, which is like really hard to do. This The galaxy I have to go to is a galaxy called Jackie Sweet Galaxy. I got into Jackie Sweet Galaxy and I saw I was in a hotel. I had one small task, to find the orange key. I went to the front desk to talk to Jackie, the hotel manager, and I explained to her that I'm looking for an orange key. I thought she'd be very confused, but she seemed to know exactly what I was talking about. This is what she told me. Ah, yes, Marcus. My friend Angelina told me that you were coming. Hold on one second. Jackie called out, Mateito! Mateito! She brings out a guy named Matt, and she tells me that he knows where the orange key is at. Matt told me that the orange key is in his secret room of the hotel. Matt took me to this floor of the hotel and had five crystals that seemed to power the door. Matt explained that when he and his family lost his youngest sibling on vacation, they had to find five crystals and have someone take exams to activate the crystals only to find out his dad's boss had kidnapped his brother. I thought that sounded like the craziest story ever, but I know that Jerry had actually read about it a while back, and his performance on the test within the book was really good. Inside of, the, inside of the door, Matt told me that an orange key was on the table. But when we got there, we found out that the key was not there. Matt said that someone has taken it, and we have no idea who took it. Matt told me we would have to... <sighs> to knock on everyone's door to find the key. Everyone we asked said they did not know anything about a key. Then, on the phone Angelina gave me, she texted me saying that when breakfast starts in the morning, I should look for the key. Me and Matt got up the next morning and went to the hotel breakfast. We asked everyone about the orange key, and even Jackie put a sign at the front desk. Matt was eating a muffin, and he starts choking. He was choking for a while, and I went over to do the maneuver to dislodge whatever he was choking on. As I did this, the orange key comes out, and it goes really high in the air. It was stuck on the wall at a very unreachable point. There was a family that was taking all the muffins and the key landed in their muffin stash. Alrighty, and that is actually the end of Super Marcus Galaxy Part 12A. We will have Part 12B shortly. Anyway, it's Largo Vlogs, and I'll see you guys then.